Let's look at again at the relationship between the definite integral and area. In a simple case like this, this area is equal to the definite integral. So if we take the definite integral from 1 to 4 of this function, f of x dx, we get back this area. That's what the integral was designed to do. We built boxes to approximate area from the very beginning. Now, if the region that we have is below the x-axis instead of below above the x-axis, well, this is a positive area. But when we take the definite integral from 2 to 3 of this function, g of x, we get back negative this area. So anything below the axis, we get back negative the area. Anything above the axis, we get back positive the area. That's something very important to remember about definite integrals. It doesn't always just give you area. It may give you negative of the area. So if you have a function like this one where you have a part of it above and a part of it below, then if you want the definite integral from 2 to 3 of a function like this, of a function h of x that looks like this, then what you're going to get back is you're going to get the positive area above minus the negative area below. So you're going to get back a1 minus a2 in this case. That's the relationship between the definite integral and area. It doesn't always give you area. It gives you the area of the parts above minus the area of the parts below. That's what it's built to do.